This project focuses on one of the fastest growing areas in aerospace today, unmanned aerial systems, also known as UAS. Nowadays, there are UAS for precision agriculture, package delivery, ecological monitoring, surveillance, and a myriad of different other uses. To accomplish this wide variety of missions, UAS come in all different size, shapes, and form factors. You can get aircraft that fit in the palm of your hand all the way up to ones that are the size of a commercial airliner. Now, despite this wide taxonomy, virtually all of these aircraft and systems have one thing in common in the sense that they all use GPS very heavily for localization and navigation. If you don't have GPS, a lot of these systems become severely handicapped or downright disabled. Now this is a problem because without GPS, if a system isn't able to navigate or return home, it goes from being a huge asset to a huge liability in the blink of an eye. What this project focuses on is developing an infrastructure and a system to allow UAS to operate in GPS denied or degraded environments. The system we developed is called the Transponder Based Positioning Information System or TRAPIS. The way it operates is that an aircraft carries a standard aviation transponder such as a mode C, S, or ADS-B transponder. We utilize a ground-based system to interrogate the transponder and triangulate the aircraft's position based on the time of flight of the response signal. Our TRAPPIST software application then receives this information and can forward this to our customized ground control station, which is then able to relay that position information back up to the aircraft via the data telemetry link. The aircraft is running a customized autopilot that's been programmed to utilize the ground-based positioning information for navigation, thereby eliminating the aircraft's reliance on GPS. The Ground Control Station, GCS for short, maintains a connection with the UAV that allows us to communicate with that UAV. We can monitor data that the UAV sends to us, such as altitude and battery information, and we can also send information back to the UAV. Our custom GCS setup takes in the position data of our UAV from the TRAPPIST application and translates it into what's called a MavLink message. This is basically a language our UAV can understand. After translating the position, the GCS sends the position data from TRAPPIST to the UAV so the UAV can understand its own position. At this point from the UAV standpoint, it's receiving a lot of information from the GCS but it doesn't know how to make sense of it, it doesn't know what to do with that information. So to make sense of that information, the lab developed a custom TRAPPIST flight mode that goes onto the UAV. To keep things simple for the UAV, we designed the flight mode to take in and understand the position data coming from the GCS. And it allows the UAV to follow a flight path by only steering with its rudder. TRAPPIST uses an ADS-B transponder, which is a standard piece of aviation equipment that broadcasts a signal that can be used by air traffic control and by other aircraft to pinpoint the location of a plane. The FAA is requiring all manned aircraft to have these on board by the year 2020. The TRAPPIST payload consists of the transponder and its antenna as well as an Arduino that allows us to manually cut off the transponder's GPS signal for testing purposes. The TRAPPIST payload is a standalone unit that can easily be installed on any UAV. It weighs a little over a pound and it has its own power source so it doesn't need to connect to the aircraft in any way. Four identical planes were constructed for this project using off-the-shelf Finwing Sabre airframes and a Pixhawk autopilot computer. These aircraft are about four feet long and with around a six-foot wingspan. The total weight of the aircraft plus the payload is 6.9 pounds, which makes these some of the smallest and lightest ADS-B equipped aircraft in the world. Halfway there, it's fighting against 14 knots of wind, so it's taking its time. And wait for it. Okay, so you're, you're good to go down. Uh, yes! Before you land, make sure you... <laughs> make sure you turn the button, guys! I think they can see it now. Come on, baby. Go down. Yes! So this successful flight test demonstrated the feasibility of a GPS-denied navigation system using the infrastructure we've established. 
We hope to expand on this technology in future projects and establish a viable alternative for UAS navigation in GPS-denied environments.